Come on in. Welcome folks, welcome to Limestone Branch Distillery. Welcome to the tasting room here at Limestone Branch Distillery. I've got a couple products that I want to talk to you about, uh, one of which is our flagship brand, which is Yellowstone Select. Now, Yellowstone Select is in all 50 states and 13 countries, and uh, it goes all the way back to 1872. And back in those days, uh, we had a park in the United States that was being accepted, Yellowstone National Park. And uh, Bernard Dant had a salesperson coming through Wyoming at that time, Charles Townsend. And Charles came back to the distillery after a long horseback ride to Kentucky and told Bernard he needed to name a bourbon after this park out west. This bourbon's been carried on the shelf at Yellowstone National Park ever since, never to come off the shelf, even during prohibition, sold for medicinal purposes. Brilliant marketing by great uncle Bernard. You see the boys that own this distillery's last name is Beam, but their mother was a dent the whole time. I like to say the boys weren't born, they were distilled. Now Yellowstone Select is 75% white heirloom corn, 13% rye, and the rest in malted barley. That's the distillate we make here at Limestone Branch. Some of the distillate in the bottle is seven year old. So that is from our partner, Luxco Corporation and Luxro Barrel Houses. We have the keys to those barrel houses to blend with it, what we need and what we would like to, you know, image and likeness of great granddaddy, etc. So that's what we do. You got a little bit of a blend from theirs and a little bit of blend of ours. And as time goes on, ours will increase and theirs will decrease and it'll be all limestone branch bourbon eventually. But uh, what happens every time you go through a bottle of Yellowstone Select? A percentage goes back to the National Parks Conservancy. So, so Tom asked, asked about our yeast and, and how much that contributes to the uh, flavor profile of the whiskey. Yeast is a really important part of process of making whiskey so important back before years ago master distillers weren't called master distillers they were called yeast makers and that's because they were trained in how to make the yeast and so what would happen is someone would capture a, a wild yeast that worked really well in a fermentation gave the right flavor profiles and then they would keep that yeast propagated and it was handed down from family to family, generation to generation. And for us, we are very lucky. This is a minor case beans yeast jug. And he would start his yeast, he'd keep a yeast culture in this jug and uh, start each new batch from that and repropagate, kind of like you do a sourdough bread starter. And this was handed down to my grandfather who used that as well when he was a master distiller and it's very heavy and because um, you know yeast would give off a lot of pressure so you it had to be well made and heavy to handle that pressure then my uncle ended up with it and uh, donated it to the Oscar Getz Museum in Bardstown Kentucky and they there it stayed from the 1970s until we opened in 2010 and uh, they allow us to, to display it here. We were able to take this to uh, Firm Solutions over in Danville, Kentucky, and they were very careful, opened it up, scraped the inside, and were able to get the DNA from the yeast in this jug. So from that DNA, we were able to get our yeast that we use today, and so we are really proud of the fact that we use a yeast that's at least 100 years old and may go all the way back to the beginning of the beans. Uh, 
We know Minor Case worked for his Uncle Jack at early times, um, and his father had the original Bean Distillery. Um, so we know it's at least 100 years and probably much older than that. So come on up and we'll talk about the mash. So Tom also asked, how long are mash uh, ferments? And you ask about a wort, and we don't actually use a wort, we use a mash. And that, um, the difference between a wort and a mash, so scotch uses a wort, many beers use a wort as well, which is laudered off, they lauder off the grain. But here in Kentucky, we use an open fermentation is, is uh, common to the traditional method, and um, we use a mash. And the mash means that all the grain is still with that uh, liquid. So we ferment on the grain or in a mash. Each one of these fermentations is 600 gallons. You can see it has uh, coils down in here uh, to cool it off. Mash heats up as it uh, is fermenting, so we continually cool it. We run about uh, 88 to 90 degrees fermentation. And the process start to finish will take about uh, two and a half days. And you'll see, they come over here. This one has just been pumped over recently. You can see it's really active. And has a thick cap on it. And what's happening is all that CO2 that's being produced is holding up the grain that's in that mash. That's still pretty sweet, so I'd say that's, I'd say this one's um, probably about 18 hours would be my guess. And um, as it ferments, that cap gets uh, thinner and thinner because there's less and less CO2 to hold that grain up. And you can see how thin this is. Hardly any cap on that at all. Still relatively sweet though, but it has a little bit of ways to go. That's pretty good. That, that you'd want to have, that's like a breakfast of champions there. A little bit, little bit of alcohol, a little bit of sweetness. Got the grain, kind of like a cereal. Yeah, you have that for breakfast. But anyway, that, that, that cap drops off. This is about the same over here. The, the cap will fall, and that really show, indicates that um, the fermentation is ready to be distilled. That's a, uh, besides checking the sugar, that's an easy way to tell so when that cap gets real thin and the fermentation's slow, then we know it's about right to go. And that whole process, Again, about two and a half days, then it goes over to the stripping still. And uh, we'll strip that off. We're a, we're a pot still operation. We, we distill everything twice, so we our original stripping still. We'll take that 600 gallons, ends up with about 125 gallons of low wine, which is our uh, distillate off of that. And then the rest of the 125 gallons gets is the spent grain slop that we send off uh, and the local farmer uses it for uh, cattle feed. And so we go from our uh, stripping still into a finished still, and that's our second distillation. And um, so all of our Yellowstone gets, starts out right here, uh, coming off the still. You can see how fast it's coming off. It's kind of amazing that all, all of our products come off that little batch right there. So Andre Liberati, hey Andre, how you doing? <laughs> uh, hope you're doing well, hope you're surviving over there. But um, you ask about which is the most important steps in all those steps we talked about with the distillation. So you have the mashing and uh, fermentation, distilling, and then the barreling. But you know, they're all so important because they all add specific components to the overall finished product. But, you know, as with anything, like building a house, you have to start with a good foundation. You know, you, mashing, choosing the grain, 
getting your grain nice and fresh and mashing. If you don't get that right, then everything else is for naught because if, if you don't have a good mash and a, a good starting uh, base, then everything else is just a waste of time because you can't save it through the distillation process. But e like I said, every step is key. You know, when you make cuts on the still, you know, you don't, you have to make a balance between where you cut those heads and tails. That's actually the signature of each distillery as how much heads or tails they let into that uh, heart cut. Uh, we start ours at about 160 and go to right about 100 proof. Then these are our barrels. These two just got filled and they're getting ready to um, head up to the warehouse. And um, what, what type of water do we use? Now, for our waters in our fermentation, we use our city water here. We're blessed in Kentucky to have uh, great water, high in calcium, which takes that iron out, uh, which it makes for very good whiskey. But when we barrel, we use an RO water, which is, um, has no mineral content in it at all. Uh, if you were to use uh, like spring water to barrel, you could cause your whiskey to cloud with those minerals that are in that. So you would use an RO water. Back in the day, my grandfather would use water from a cistern, which is rainwater, which is basically distilled water, no, no chemicals in it. So uh, that's what we use. We'll take down, um, proof it down to 107. That's where we barrel at, and then we ship it out. So George from Soho Whiskey Club ask if we had any problems with our bottling during the um, COVID crisis. We have a very small crew. We're very fortunate we were able to continue bottling straight through the shutdown of, of Kentucky. So uh, bourbon in Kentucky is considered an essential business. So we stayed open and bottled straight through. Here's our bottling line over here where we bottle all of our uh, Yellowstone Select and the minor case on the automatic bottling line. You can see the little forehead bottler over there that we do all of our um, single barrel and uh, smaller productions all get done on that. The only part of the distillery that shut down because of the crisis was the public and so we shut our tours down from uh, March and we just opened back up in, in May. Uh, but the, the story itself continued to function as long with the bottling. So we really had no issues at all uh, back here. We were very fortunate with, about that. Welcome back. I want to talk to you now about our experimental collection. We've got uh, a cute little Connex container out back that we've ricked out. And uh, what we're doing in that Connex container are experimental uh, bourbon distillates, rye whiskeys, all sorts of unique and different things. This is a rye whiskey. It's a 100% malted rye, and I only know of a few distilleries that do 100% rye, and ours is one of them. We're doing it with malted rye, which gives it a creamy finish, uh, kind of a spicy front end and a creamy finish. It's uh, one of the most expensive things a distillery could possibly make using the higher dollar grain rye as opposed to corn or barley. And uh, it's a really phenomenal, well-received single barrel. And so the single barrels are available in the state of Kentucky and to our gift shop. So when you come to Limestone Branch Distillery, you're gonna experience new and interesting things from our experimental collection. This is a bourbon distillate. And as you can see, the mash bill on it is 75% white heirloom corn, 13% rye, the rest in malted barley. This is from our stills, from our distillery, and it's kind of a view into the future of what Yellowstone bourbon could taste like in six to seven years, but it's only about 21 months old in a 15 gallon barrel. The 15 gallon barrels, believe it or not, cost you just about as much as a 53 gallon barrel but what they do for a master distiller is give him a view into the future of what his distillate could be like in a shorter period of time. So it's not exactly what you're gonna get out of a, a six or seven year bourbon, but it sure is good. And we sell a lot of bottles of it through our gift shop. People really enjoy it. 
And then we have bowling and birch on this end. This is our, one of our newest expressions. And let me tell you something, this is the prettiest bottle in the liquor industry, bar none. You flip it around, it looks like painted on botanicals on the back. When you turn it forward, it goes three dimensional. He called it bowling and birch after Kathleen Dant Bowling, his grandmother, and then the Birch sisters married three quarters of the family. One Birch sister married Mike Dant, the other Birch sister married their grandfather, Guy Bean. Same porch, same preacher. I like to say it saves on your bourbon cost using one preacher. Bowling and Birch has 17 different botanicals. That's a lot of botanicals. More botanicals than it is juniper. So it is a, more of a new world gin and uh, it's done in the London dry fashion straight through the column, but he also has a rotovap that he takes extracts off. And if there's a uh, percentage that needs to be added to bring flavor up on say lemon verbena, uh, then he can add that to it. So he calls it the new world gin and uh, it's a little bit lighter and a little bit sweeter than your typical London dry. I like to say 17 different botanicals with more botanicals than Colonel Harlan Sanders had spices in this chicken recipe. Leave it to the beam, Colonel Beam. All right, and Jacob from uh, City of London Distillery wanted to know about weather and how it affects uh, the, our products. So in Kentucky, we have really hot summers, and if you were here now, you'd know that because it's in the, the high 90s, even higher in this uh, container here. Uh, high 90s, but in the winter, we can go down um, well below zero. Uh, actually, about, uh, it, I've seen it, you know, 20 below uh, zero Fahrenheit. Um, so that is what makes for traditional Kentucky bourbon, you know, that expansion and contraction of the heat and the cold out of those barrels. And um, you'd ask if we wanted to experiment with our bourbon in other areas of the country to see what, what it would, uh, how it would affect. Well, I'm a traditionalist and uh, we make Kentucky bourbon and so I'm, I'm really happy with what we do here. We're uh, fortunate here in the States, we have craft distilleries in every state uh, so you, you can see different effects on that. Uh, personally, I think states should uh, stick with what they do best or you know what is indicative of that area. The, the northeast is rye concentrated, rye, rye forward. And I think out west lends itself for a single malt whiskey just beautifully because the, the weather is more like Scotland where it's a little bit more uh, even where you don't get those wide fluctuations like we do here in Kentucky. So this is our uh, experimental barrel house. Stephen had talked about that earlier. These are 15 gallon barrels and this is where we do different uh, mash bills. I experiment with, uh, this is the malted rye. We have a weeded bourbon. We do chocolate malt and caramel malt. Uh, we've done malted uh, wheat. Um, malted rye in, in our regular bourbon. So a lot, a lot of different projects going on uh, and it all happens right here. And these uh, 15 gallon barrels age out in about um, 16 to 24 months is, is a sweet spot for these guys. All right, so we have a question from the bourbon patty. Martinus about uh, our minor case rye and uh, you know minor case was named after my great-grandfather We're real, real proud of that one and uh, this our only Expression right now is finished in sherry cask and you know that cream sherry cask from Myers winery in Cincinnati, so it's a 100% American product and he's Martinus is wanting to know if we're going to do uh, a different expression or maybe a, a barrel proof or something. And that is something that we've talked about and I would love to do. Uh, we're just trying to get the, uh, the uh, spirits to be able to do it. But uh, I think a, uh, like a six year old minor case rye would be fantastic. So we do a little bit different uh, rye. It's 45% corn, 4% malt and 51% rye. So it's a really, uh, 
big corn percentage on that. But uh, that would be uh, probably as far as we go. We may, you know, years down the road do, a, do a, another finish, but uh, we don't want to expand our line too, uh, too much so that we take the, our eye off the ball. And, uh, and then you ask about the Yellowstone, would it expand into the rye? And for now, for Limestone Branch, minor case is our rye, Yellowstone is our bourbon brand, and it will remain our bourbon brand. So, uh, but we do do the different expressions. Uh, each year we do a limited edition. Uh, so each year that is different. We've just added in the uh, uh, barrel pick, which is this label here, which is actually uh, a label very similar to an old uh, export label. So uh, one of the first times I saw this label was, uh, or similar label was from uh, uh, London. So that inspired this label. And do we uh, collaborate with Lux Row? Well, because we don't have a whole lot of old whiskey, we are able to uh, pick barrels from Lux Row's, uh, Lux Co's inventory. So we collaborate with them on, our, on all of our products.